Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled, What is PAD Control? An Intuitive Power Electronics Explanation. Let me start off with background of uh, power converters control. Here I'm showing a, say a plant, a power stage, say a PWM converter. This will be the modulator. Then we have a feedback path here. There is a voltage divider, the reference, and this is an amplifier with some phase compensation network. Now this part here is actually known. This is the power plant. It's a modulator. It has also a certain transfer function, small signal transfer function. So this should be known before going into the question of designing the uh, controller or the phase compensator. Now in this case, I'm showing just an amplifier with some phase compensation here. Of course, it could take very many configurations. So the problem is to design this part. Now we have here a feedback and there is a loop gain and the loop gain is the product of this part A and part B. So we can uh, see it here in a, like a block diagram. This is the reference. This part is block B. This is the compensator or controller. This is the plant, including here the modulator. K is actually the voltage divider. So this is part A, this is part B, and the design problem uh, or control design problem is actually to come up uh, with this part. Let me also cover a little bit about stability, uh, body plots, uh, so that uh, we'll see what is the reason for using the PAD later on. We have here actually the Nyquist criteria, which means that we plot the vector of the loop gain. This is the vector of the loop gain. So each point here is a vector and a phase. This is a unit circle. This is a, a complex plane, it's an imaginary part and the real part of the loop gain. This is the unit circle, and the um, Nyquist criteria says that, uh, well, simplified that if this curve does not encircle the minus one point, then the system is stable. A key point here is where this plot is actually penetrating the unit circle, like here, and the, the phase here is the so-called phase margin, that is how far are we from this dangerous point. Now this unit circle translates into the 0 dB line here in the uh, border plots. So this is just separating this into two parts, the, actually the amplitude, that is the vector, and the phase, the phase of each one of the points. And then the phase margin will be the difference between the actual phase when we penetrate the unit circle, which is the zero dB here, and 180 degree. This is 180 degree. So this is, in a nutshell, the, uh, the Nyquist uh, stability criteria and how we represent it in the, uh, bo by body plots. Now we want the phase mountain to be uh, fairly large or larger than, say, 40 because if this is the excitation, if the phase margin is small, we're going to have overshoot, and the transfer function in closed loop is going to have this peak, this overshoot here, or this peak here, and these two are a function of the phase margin. The smaller the phase margin, the larger is the overshoot, and the larger is this peak here. The next point that I'm going to cover very briefly is the uh, question of the relationship between the amplitude and phase in minimum phase system. Now, minimum phase system means that there's no right half plane zero. This would mean that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the slope that you see in the amplitude and the phase. That is, if the slope here is zero, the phase is zero, you have a breakpoint, then it goes down to minus 90 degree at the break point of course it's 44 45 and if there's another pole here 
it's going to be another shift to 45 and if there is a zero then it's going to be an advance of total of 90 degree so it, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the slopes and the phase so here we have a case in which there is a zero there's a pole there's another pole etc etc and eventually we reach with this uh, say uh, loop gain we reach the zero db and the slope here is now minus db per decade because it went up and down etc until we reach this point it is very interesting and useful that the fact that the history really doesn't matter in a minimum phase system and the reason is that for each break here for a zero and a pole, you can write it in, in this form. And if you are far away from the breakpoints, then this term here, say f over f2 is larger than one, then therefore all the zero and the poles are actually canceling each other and the phase shifts are canceling each other. So if you reached a slope of minus 20 dB, it corresponds to a single pole without having to worry about the history here and therefore the phase shift here is minus 90 degree and therefore the phase margin is 90 degree so by looking at the rate of closure that is the way this curve is actually closing up this zero db you can tell immediately whether the system is stable or not in a minimum phase system and this is of course can be used very nicely in the design uh, stage now there are two ways to go about the design in terms of uh, plotting the border plots one is this conventional way in which you start with the plant then you draw the controller that you wish to have then you, you combine the two and then you look here at the crossover and the uh, phase here. What I would like to recommend that I've been using for many years now is a different way which is much more convenient that it is using the 1 over B or 1 over controller uh, graph method. Here we start with the plant, this is the plant itself and then we are not doing anything with it, we are leaving it as it is but drawing here the 1 over B, the 1 over the controller. Now in a log log scale as it is here, then we see that the, this difference here between 20 log A minus 20 log 1 over B is 20 log BA, which means that this difference here is actually the loop gain. Furthermore, this point when 20 log A is equal to 20 log 1 over B, it is where B A is equal to 1. So this is the penetration of the 0 to B. That is, this is this point here. So in this case, we can leave A as it is, redraw various uh, compensator, and uh, therefore decide where we're going to uh, cross over and of course uh, by shaping uh, B or 1 over B uh, we can have a phase margin that we wish. So in this case for example we have here A, we have 1 over B, we are crossing here at exactly the breakpoint which means that uh, although this is minus 20 dB per decade the closure rate is 20 dB per decade but since we are crossing here at the breakpoint, then of course we have an extra 45 degrees uh, phase lag, which means that the, we know immediately that the phase margin here will be 45 degrees. Or in general, if you have the plant, the converter transfer function, then for various cross crossing, of 1 over B, 1 over the controller, like here you'll have a, this is 20 dB per decade closure here, 
So you have a phase voucher of 90 degree here at the break point 45 degree at again here 90 degree this is minus 20 to be per decade and this is um, zero so uh, we have here 90 de degrees of phase margin and so on and so forth let's go over here this is minus 40 and this is now minus 20 it's one over b right so the rate of closure, the net rate of closure is 20 dB per decade. So therefore the phase margin here we know is 90 degree. And if we cross here the break point, it'll be 45. So this is very convenient and I'm going to use it later on. Now we go to the point of PID. Now PID is a controller which is composed of, of three parallel sections. One is just a gain, KP, proportional. One is an integrator, KI over S. S is the Laplace transform uh, variable. And one is the derivative. KD is the uh, factor of this derivative, the constant of this derivative. So the total that we have here, the sum of all these three, is this expression here. Now we can, of course, combine these and get this second order equation which has these solutions. So what we see that basically PID is nothing but a double zero um, controller plus a integrator or a pole at zero as we say, uh, that is two zeros and in a pole. So that this is basically the meaning of a PID uh, from the mathematical point of view that we see it here. And we can also generate uh, very nicely the transfer function. Of course, we can go back and do it uh, from this expression, but here is a nice uh, graphical way to do it. We can plot the three components, like here and here. This will be the K i, the integrator, which goes down by 20 dB per decade. This goes up by plus 20 dB per decade. And of course, the kp is a straight line. Now, the cross over here is when this term is, or this one, the absolute value is equal to 1. So uh, this frequency is ki over 2 pi, and here it's kd over 2 pi. Now, if you have three curves like this, which you are summing them up. This is the log-log scale. Frequency is a log, and also it's the B. Of course, the gain in this gain is also log. Then, if you are in this region, this value here is much larger than this one, and definitely much larger than uh, what is left from this KD. So basically, you have only this curve here when you're summing them up. Here, this one is higher than this, this is higher than this, so this basically is, we are left with this component here, and the same thing goes from this for this part. So that here it's higher than the Kp, and definitely higher than this uh, Ki, which is very low now. So here what we got. So basically, this is the transfer function of a PID, which we see clearly we have here uh, the two zero. This is a break point for a zero, this is a, another zero. So here we have the PAD and uh, by the approach I've just shown, uh, we actually start with one over PAD, which is just the mirror image the, of this PAD in the log scale. So we can do many things with it. For example, if we have a transform function like this, we can cross over here with this curve here if by properly, of course, designing the values here. And this will be a 45 degree uh, phase margin. We can cross over here. This is shown as minus 20 BB per decade. And this is a straight line. So we have here a phase margin of 90 degree or in fact, we can do this, which is very nice, because we get here a much wider uh, bandwidth, and this goes down by minus 40 dB per decade. This is minus 20 dB 
per decade. It's one over this double zero of PID. And therefore, uh, we have here a safe first march. So as we can see, the PID, which is basically a double zero controller, is very versatile. You can do it, you can do with it many things. Now, how can we synthesize a controller like this? Well, here is a, an example of a classical way to do it. Uh, we have various breakpoints, and let me talk about the breakpoints first of all. We have this breakpoint that is uh, when this capacitor is becoming a short compared to R3, and then we have this break, two actually breakpoints when this C1 is becoming smaller than R2 and then uh, C1 is smaller than R1 and we are left with R1. So at the very beginning, at very low frequency, uh, we see just the open loop gain of the amplifier. This is this portion here. And then we start, C3 is a small capacitor. So then we can start seeing C2, which is this drop here, until we reach the point that this impedance is equal to this one, beyond which R3 is playing now a role, C2 is like a short, so we have R3 and we have R2, and therefore we have this straight line. And then we start to see C2, and this is the next zero here, which brings us up again and until of course uh, the impedance of this capacitor is much small or smaller than R1 and then again we're going a straight line which is now basically this resistor divided by these two in parallel like a uh, inverting amplifier and this is actually due to the C3 we would like to limit the bandwidth due to, to eliminate uh, extra or unnecessary noise. And the amplifier itself, of course, will have a drop off here. So this is the classical way of generating this double zero, which is just another way of saying PID. That's what it is. And this is, will be one over this uh, PID. And of course, normally we're going to use this portion here which is going down by minus 20 dB per decade. And therefore, if our plant is minus 40 dB per decade, we can get a rate of closure of minus 20 dB per decade, which will ensure a safe freeze march. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it interesting and that perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.